I've met this morning with my counterparts in the G7, as well as heads of the United Nations, NATO, and the European Union. I express my thanks for the solidarity we have seen as we've stood up an unprecedented global effort. <clears throat> I updated our partners on the significant progress we made in the past 10 days. As of this afternoon, we've helped evacuate 70,700 people just since August the 14th, 75,900 people since the end of July. Just in the past 12 hours, Another 19 U.S. military flights, 18 C-17s and one C-130, carrying approximately 6,400 evacuees, and 31 coalition flights carrying 5,600 people have left Kabul just in the last 12 hours. A total of 50 more flights, 12,000 more people since I updated you this morning. These numbers are a testament to the efforts of our brave service women and men, to our diplomats on the ground in Kabul, and to our allies still standing with us. And we had a productive discussion. There was strong agreement among the leaders about both about evacu the evacuation mission underway, as well as the need to coordinate our approach to, the Afghan to Afghanistan as we move forward. First, on evacuation, we agreed that we will continue to close our close cooperation to get people out as efficiently and safely as possible. We are currently on a pace to finish by August the 31st. The sooner we can finish, the better. Each day of operations brings added risk to our troops. But the completion by August 31st depends upon the Taliban continuing to cooperate and allow access to the airport for those who were, trans were transporting out and no disruptions to our operations. In addition, I've asked the Pentagon and the State Department for contingency plans to adjust the timetable, should that become necessary. I'm determined to ensure that we complete our mission, this mission. I'm also mindful of the increasing risks that I've been, I've been uh, briefed on and the need to factor those, re those risks in. They're real and significant challenges that we also have to take into consideration. The longer we stay, starting with the acute and growing risk of an attack by a terrorist group known as ISIS-K, an ISIS affiliate in Afghanistan, which is a sworn enemy of the Taliban as well. Every day we're on the ground is another day we know that ISIS-K is seeking to target the airport and attack both U.S. and allied forces and innocent civilians. Additionally, thus far, the Taliban have been taking uh, steps to work with us so we can get our people out. But it's a tenuous situation. We already had some uh, gunfighting break out. We run a serious risk of it breaking down as time goes on. Second, the G7 leaders and the leaders of the EU, NATO, and the UN all agreed that we will stand united in our approach to the Taliban. We agreed the legitimacy of any future government depends on the approach it now takes to uphold international obligations, including to prevent Afghanistan from being used as a base for terrorism. And we agree that none of us are going to take the Taliban's word for it. We'll judge them by their actions, and we'll stay in close coordination on any steps that we take moving forward in response to the Taliban's behavior. At the same time, we renewed our humanitarian commitment to the Afghan people and supported a proposal by the Secretary General Guterres of the United Nations-led international response with unfettered humanitarian access in Afghanistan. Third, we talked about our mutual obligation to support refugees and evacuees currently fleeing Afghanistan. The United States will be a leader in these efforts, and we'll look to the international community and to our partners to do the same. We're already seeing our allies' commitment. They're bringing, their, they're bringing to their countries the Afghans who served alongside their forces as translators or in their embassies, just as we're bringing to the United States those Afghans who worked alongside our forces and diplomats. We're continuing that effort. We're conducting thorough s s uh, security screening in the intermediate stops they're making for anyone who is not a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent resident of the United States. 
Anyone arriving in the United States will have undergone a background check. And, and we must all work together to resettle thousands of Afghans who ultimately qualify for refugee status. The United States will do our part, and we are already working closely with refugee organizations to rebuild a system that was purposefully destroyed by my predecessor. Finally, we agreed to stay vigilant against terrorist threats that have metastasized around the world. We went to Afghanistan with our allies in 2001 for clear reasons. One, to get the people who attacked us on 9-11 and to get Osama bin Laden, and to make sure that Afghanistan was not used again as a base from which to attack the United States or our allies. We achieved that objective. We delivered justice to bin Laden more than a decade ago. But the current environment looks very different than it did in 2001. And we have to meet the challenges we face today. We run effective counterterrorism operations around the world, where we know terrorism is more of a threat than it is today in Afghanistan, without any permanent military presence on the ground. And we can and will do the same thing in Afghanistan with our over-the-horizon counterterrorism capability. Cooperation with our closest partners on our enduring counterterrorism mission will continue to be an essential piece of our strategy. In short, we all, all of us agreed today that we're going to stand shoulder to shoulder with our closest partners to meet the current challenges we face in Afghanistan, just as we have for the past 20 years. We're acting in consultation and cooperation with our closest friends and fellow democracies. And I want to again thank all of our allies and partners around the world who have rallied in support of our shared mission. We ended the conversation today by a clear statement on all of our parts. We are going to stay united, locked at the hip in terms of what we have to do. We'll get that done. And tomorrow, uh, I've asked uh, um, Secretary Blinken to give you an update and a detailed report on exactly how many Americans are still in Afghanistan, how many have gone out, and what our projection is. So thank you again, and God bless you, and may God protect our diplomats and all those in harm's way. Thank you. Thank you.